How are you feeling better? Yeah, it's yeah. just I think the smoke doesn't help. But oh, I, I it doesn't lost, help me either. That's why I my lost eyes are taste and smell. I can't taste or smell anything, which is the weirdest experience. Yeah, Bridget didn't smell or taste anything for like three months. We go out to eat. And she wants to know what kind of muffins. I'm like, why does it matter? <laughs> so that's no. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bring call to order the uh, first selectmen's meeting special <coughs> meeting um, dated uh, June eighth. And could you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, I need a motion to um, approve the agenda as written. Um, so moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. You guys had a chance to look over the minutes of our regular meeting on May 17th. Yeah. I will take a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Um, we have a little piece of correspondence. Um, we received a, um, a little note of thanks for the work on East Shore Drive from our, from our um, folks um, down there at, that's like Hayward, right? East Shore Drive? Yep. Um, from William Carson, we appreciate the thanks. We don't often get thanks. We get usually complaints, so it's nice every now and then to hear a positive. Say thank you, Mr. Carson. Um, real quick on the um, first selectman's report, I'm just going to kind of catch you up quickly. Um, this coming week on Sunday night, we start our first closure of 63 hours at the bridge, so everybody should be aware that that's happening. Sunday night from 8 p.m. to Wednesday at 11 a.m., no later. It could open earlier than that, we'll see. Um, that's the first one. Um, we, um, we were just speaking about it prior to the meeting getting started, but we have a land conveyance that has been done here in East Haddam um, for a piece of property that is actually the old roadbed of Town Street across the street from the fields at Ballocks, and it connects to a piece of property that's owned currently by Jim Curtin. Um, and that might be a future site of a farmer's market, so keep that in mind. You know, listen for that. We're, um, that'll be in future discussions. Um, we are currently working with um, some more library um, information, just so that you all know. We're working on getting a um, kind of a preliminary um, estimate of options so we've had our library study committee um, pulled together and they you know, picked out different places where it might be a good place for us to build a library what we wanted to do was get a preliminary idea as to what it is actually going to cost maybe by a square footage dollar amount like if we bought, built new if we renovated the the old ones or if we bought something or we did something in between such as downstairs in the basement i know i keep hitting this one up but i think Building new right now is very expensive, and I'm not sure that everybody has the appetite for that. So I figured, you know, that would be a compromise that if, you know, we had to renovate the current libraries. The problem with renovating the two libraries is that it's always going to be renovated. They're two older buildings, um, and we also have to staff two buildings for the same amount of time. So that's a, you know, that's a big expense. Um, so that's that part of it and then again obviously the new construction is you know equally as expensive however it gets all the staff into one building so the compromise would be possibly looking at the basement space here to see whether that was something that could work so we wanted to get a dollar amount on each of those three and then what we'll do is we'll put together a library building committee and we'll determine you know which direction we go in and how we do that and what I think what I'd like to do is similar the way we did that survey for the budget is put a, put a survey out and just let's see what kind of answers we get from the people of town and see what they would think. If they would rather build brand new, if they would rather renovate the old, or if they would rather do a compromise and maybe do the basement. So we'll see what those numbers come back at. We have some leftover money from the um, library study committee that we're gonna use for that portion of it because the, you know, the architects still have to you know, do the math and all that. So we're gonna do that and then once we get that back, we'll put it out there and see what, you know, so we're gonna, we're headed to, to people are asking about, well, what's going on with the library? So anyways, that's what's going on with the library right now. Um, Moodis, um, we had a, um, the walk through Moodis um, done by DOT professionals. They had planners, they had road people, they had kind of people, whatever, all these different folks that came in and met with 
Jim Ventress, our land use uh, administrator, with Bob Kazner, our EDC com um, commission chair. Um, uh, Public Works was there and um, facilities was there. And they did a walk up and down Falls Road and Joe Williams to kind of take a whole look at that. Um, and hopefully their recommendations of what to do as far as connectivity <coughs> in, in, in Moodis. So between that and the live and the sidewalk study, we might get you know enough that we can actually get a grant written and then maybe get some grant and get some kind of village looking things there. We've already changed the zoning in Moodis. We did this what a year ago in October, and so that you know we can have multi store you know, multi floor buildings now. So between all of that, we're hoping that you know that will cull some interesting things going on in Moodis. So that's what's going on there. Redevelopment Agency is actually meeting tonight, but just so you know, they've got, um, they're getting closer and closer to getting some um, information from um, the uh, Brownfields um, grant people that um, there might be some grant, grant money there available, depending on what's going on with that, so that we can see what it's going to cost the town. And then the other piece is the TIF financing that went out for bid, I believe. Yeah, they're just waiting for the budget to pass because they don't have enough in their current budget right now okay. to um, to do the project, the whole project. And I don't want to get started and sign a contract with the company. You know, they're hoping the board of finance doesn't look to their TIF money to be removed, but you can't you can't guarantee that until a budget passes, right. and that money's in next year's budget. So they're ready to appoint. I mean, that you know, you guys have already awarded the contract that when when the budget passes that that's what will happen but they want to make sure they got money in hand before they move so forward. I'm just I'm just I just want to put some information out there because people feel like there's nothing going on but there is stuff going on it is moving along <coughs> these meetings all our meetings are public so you know if, if you do have questions about these particular things um, please feel free to go online you can see them they're all you know uh, taped and they're up there for anybody who wants to take a look so that's where I'll end that Anybody have any questions about that? Um, Board Assessment Appeals, Spring 2023. Report. My apologies, is I was supposed to get the full report given to us today. All I got was the cover sheet, oh. and it didn't come in. So right. you got the cover sheet, but if you want the detail on whose properties and who's, how much each property got reduced, um, I have to wait to get the report from Board of Assessment Appeals. So we could revisit that. Oh, I can bring this back work. next next yeah, meeting. Right. Okay with that? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, public comment. <coughs> Anything online? No. Okay. Uh, unfinished business. Uh, board of Selectmen and Treasurer term length ordinance discussion. So, um, two things on this. One, um, I'll start with the Treasurer just because um, that one's easier, I guess, maybe. Um, anyway, we went through all the statutes. We found, we seemed to thought we found that the statute said that the treasurer couldn't be changed. Well, guess what? There's a new ordinance that says you could change it to four years. So that's something that, um, you know, I think we just want to put out there as something that we might want to discuss, to discuss now. Um, that if, because the only reason that one wasn't in our pile of ordinance changes in regards to term lines was because we assumed it wasn't. And then um, somehow Deb found a new statute. We checked with the lawyers, and the lawyers said, yes, indeed, you can change it to four years if we want to. The only difference with that one is, is that similar to the town clerk in that it starts in January. So even though the um, position is um, can be changed to two years, it doesn't four. turn over. I'm sorry, to four year. It doesn't turn over the way the other positions do that now that we've changed the ordinances, We've changed all the ordinances to say that there's a two-week turnover. Um, that one would have to wait because it's in statute that it has to wait to January, like I said, like the like the uh, town clerk. Town clerk and treasurer would change over in January. So that's the only difference in regards to the town treasurer and that it, it goes with the town clerk. Now, I do have an option. I could not get the treasurer one onto this next referendum for July 11th. We just we need to have it short public hearing, <coughs> just like we did with all the other ones, and get it through. But <clears throat> coming down on your agenda in a little bit is open space, and they're looking for us to go to referendum in August, okay. August, September. So I could get the treasurer on that one, because that would give us enough time to have a public hearing, 
you know, get uh, Owen to write up the ordinance like he wrote the other ones up, the attorney to write that, and I could get it in for August if you didn't feel it would be a conflict because by then whoever's running for treasurer would have probably been already announced. been announced. You know what I mean? I just don't know if that conflicts with, right. you know, candidates that are running for the positions. And we, or should we wait until after November and then do it for the 2025 election? Yeah, because that's another thing too. Is is that you know it was asked at a meeting subsequent to the budget and the ordinances passed and failed. That are you going to bring up the board of selectmen term yeah. length again? And I said I don't know. I'm going to leave it up to you guys as far as how you feel about that. So if we want to bring it back, do we want to? Do we not want to? It, I said no, so we don't want to do it. I, I'm going to leave it. I could get that on the July 11th because you've already had a public right. hearing on it. I Personally, I think I would prefer to have the Board of Selectmen one at the November election only because a July election doesn't really, I, like, I, I just don't know. I'd like to have more people kind of engaged in the process, and I think a July referendum on the budget the it week after the 4th like the of July. Just to pass. Yeah, and like, right, yeah, and to and like so remove to other up. parts of it. Um, in my opinion, it goes to Yeah, so I, I would prefer to have both of these be in November. Um, the November okay, election. I'll have to find out from Deb, like, when the questions have to be to her in order to be on the ballot. Okay. What are your thoughts on either one? So November is not late? Well, it, it would before... be able to do it for you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, like it, it looks. It, it almost looks like you're also play, also so. trying to force something. I, honestly, I'm not. I just a July 11th referendum feels like there will be 300 people that vote. I, I mean, I hope there is more people that vote. I see that. what you're but saying. Like, I, I see what I, it's saying. a big. It's a very big change about how we run the town. And yep. and what about August? Again, I'm just throwing it out there because you brought it up. What what would August do for that? I don't know. You get it's people in August because it's vacation week. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's That's, not vacation week. But, but if you do it at November, <laughs> then it, they don't <coughs> take effect until again, does that get twenty twenty five between elections, and then you've got ordinance things. I don't know. This, I'm, I'm, yeah, I no. guess I'm kind of gun shy because we went through and we did a budget, and we had all these ordinances, and people were like, "What is all this on a ballot?" And blah, blah, blah. Like maybe the ordinance things for these term lengths, just in general should be a separate. And I hate to do that because that's more money. I don't know. Or I don't know. Can you have two different pieces of paper? This is the budget and this is the ordinances. Or this is the elections and this is the ordinance. Because you're doing, if you're doing the ordinance, I think you'd have to. Because remember we talked about that? Like in for this last election. one? And that, if you put it on the November election, it would yeah. be it a, a regular be. election. So the people that could vote in the regular election. Oh, yeah. Um. There are other people that could vote for the referendum questions because, right. because they're, they're taxpayers tax and payers. all that, but electors are the only ones that can vote on the election questions. Right. And then even though these are regarding elected positions, it's still regarding our laws and not, not actually elections. elections. So taxpayers and everybody can vote, you know, that aren't electors, like, you know, your, your homeowners or people that just you know, aren't registered voters in this town, could still vote on that portion, but they could not vote on the election portion. So, so you'd have to have, have two ballots. ballots. You'd have to. Right. So I think does that, that make it messy for the registrars sure. and the people that I are I don't know. I, I just threw it out here, like, here's your options. And, and I, I don't know when Deb would have to have the questions <laughs> by, because I know there's a, it's not as short of timing as we would normally do because right. the quest, any questions going on a ballot or going to a ballot at election have to be turned in and, and I didn't get that information. And regardless, if it goes on the November election, none of those two ordinances would take place until 2025 election. Right. It would not be in place for the 2023 election. Which means the, the question about the, who is the board of select, like, the Board of Selectmen ordinances are like removed from the people who are running for election, right? Because right. it would be, yeah, it so would, that not, it would be they like would a more still... clear representation right. potentially of the question itself rather than a reflection on politics. Um, 
Would, would that be the only one, or the treasurer would be on there, too? We're going to hold I, off. I would put the treasurer on there. Yeah, I would do both. Right. So it would be for both Leave of them. Leave the budget not, alone for would, July. Uh, I'm kind that, that's what my recommendation that is. To which one? I, I, I want the budget to pass, and I think gumming it up with other things well, is not a good idea. So I would suggest that the July is just the It should stand alone, yeah. Okay. Well, I will have four <laughs> other things on the town meeting call. <coughs> that'll get voted on at town meeting. You've got two, you'll have a grant, uh, a gift acceptance in here. You have the shed gift acceptance and board of ed made, uh, board of finance made two budget transfers that are over 20,000 that need to go on there. But those will be acted upon at the town meeting. Right. No, and the only right. thing at the town meeting, if you don't put these on, that would be uh, discussed but not vote on would be the budget. So, so far, five things on the town meeting call, depending on what you want to do with this. And that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that... Those are not conflicting with each other. Correct. I don't think. Yeah. Correct. But, like I say, there's no way I could do the open space in time to get it right. on yeah. for that referendum. So... For July. For mean, July. And do we, we have to do it... I, oh, we're gonna, we'll talk about that next time. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they'd like to... They, they're targeting August, September... Who for um, land use, and they they were kind of thrown out of tentative schedule, and and um, I know Board of Finance has been talking about it, and we'll get into it well, more when right, we get into that topic. Okay. So, but so we probably I don't think they want to wait till the November election. Put it that way. So that's you know, and I'm trying to group things. If we have to have a referendum for something, let's not waste it. You know. Let's do it when we're already scheduled. Yeah. So these are. So is it you want me to move forward to have the attorney prepare the ordinances for the treasurer? The right. ones for board of selectmen are already done. It's just a repeat with a change of date. We'll hold those and then make a determination at future meetings when we're going to push these through. But and it's not so and it's not happening with the budget vote. The it's not going to happen on July 11th. Okay, is okay. that what I'm understanding? I'm happy with that. I'm okay with that. So you got then three, three things: treasurer, board of selectmen, open space will be all on the same. Potentially, place. or because again, I would just like it to be reflective of a larger group of the population. So, and again, I still think if it happens in August, it's a ref like the vote might end up being reflecting who's actually running for office, where if it happens on the point November taken. election, yeah. Point point taken. I'm just saying the same you thing. We could go for open for space. It. Yeah. No, I I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Do, <coughs> or, do, or do we push the open space <coughs> to November and tell them it has to be November and do everything on November? What I I'm saying is the I same. Mean, the fact that we had to do a redo on the budget, you know, I mean, you know, being fiscally conservative and fiscally responsible here to throw a whole other referendum up there just for a piece of open space. Well, you know what? Open space on the Girl Scout, really. But the point being is is that, you know, maybe we throw it on the election. We, we could bring it back to the next meeting. It gives us two weeks to, to think about it. feel it out to and, and talk to people, talk to Deb to see how confusing this would be for the election if, you know, on the election if we, because open space and the, the other things would be, have to be a separate ballot because even taxpayers can vote on the open space thing. Um, so let, let me feel her out on how that would be, and then you tell open space, this is what we're targeting. Because th there's still, you know, we don't even know for sure whether open space is going to go forward or not. You know, I mean, I'm assuming it will, but Have we heard it hasn't that? gone through the processes. So when we get to that, we'll talk about that. So this is on hold then. So yes, have attorney prepare treasurer. Yeah. <coughs> Date to be determined. Right. All right. Okay. So next up, look at that open space <laughs> award discussion on the Crawford properties. So we received a grant of two hundred forty-three thousand one hundred dollars, not to exceed that amount. I believe the purchase price. It's in there. It's more than that. Four hundred and um. Four hundred and one. Four hundred and seventy-nine thousand. 
Oh, there you go. Okay. So, I can't do the math. Well, yeah. How much? How much money is left in their fund? Well, then the you because yeah. you've got to add the other expenses. You got to add the expense of the property, five thousand for contract title searching, surveying, thirty well, thousand total, total, total project, five fourteen. Um, deep grant is the two forty three that would leave town share estimate at two hundred seventy thousand nine hundred. But when you when is you there put it through, you have to put it through as the whole amount. Yeah. You know, and and how much do they have left in there? It says that on there too. It says the left existing bond authorization remaining is four eighty five six fifty. I put the the one that's titled the May twenty twenty three East Adam Open Space Commission. The front page of that has all the. Yes. If you skip through, like. And then if you, it shows the deep grant amount, the town share estimate, and then the existing bond authorization remaining. I just want to get this on your radar. Board of Finance is going to discuss it at their meeting on 612, along with um, land use is coming for another bond authorization request. For another five million, and what that is is it really doesn't commit us to like. It, it's not like five thousand five million rather get put into the bank. Right. It's yeah. just the town is willing to bond for up to five million dollars for purchases of open space. It's a and selling I think it tool. Helps, like, it's a with, selling tool for the grants. people. Right with grants. Yeah. And with um. The people who want to put their money, you know, their land into open space and sell it to the town, that the town's already done homework on this. The town is still working to, to do this. But you still have to take each individual property to the voters. Right. It's easier to get like a... a you have to put that $5 million in too? No. To the, no, you don't put that $5 million into... No, no, I know you don't put the $5 million, but do you have to go to the town meeting to say, hey, this is what we want to do? Yes. So the, you and, have to vote on that as well? Yes. Tell yes, and, and that's they're looking to do that at the same time they do Kronberg. They're looking for the bond authorization at the same time. So it would be four things then on that special ballot. It would be the bond authorization, the Kronberg property, and the um, two the board of selectmen and treasurer length of terms. I'm thinking we go to the town a lot for their for their input here. <laughs> you know, of, so it would be four stuff. things on there. So that's it, it's really that unfortunately has to not unfortunately but that actually has to initiate through finance the finance department yeah. first yeah. and then um, bond authorization it was one of the first things that we did here when I came here 21 years ago so I was a little in the dark I remember sitting in the meeting in the auditorium in the high school going what are they talking <laughs> about you know so and we have different bond council now so I'm not quite Sure, how that how all that would come together yet, but it's this is to put this on your radar that we have time, but it will be coming. Bond council would have to write the resolutions so that we're covered with everything as far as bonding goes. Alrighty, well we'll put it on our radar. Okay, discuss. Okay, anybody else have any questions or anything about that? One? No. Okay. Um, bid award for the catch basin cleaning. Here we go. Our annual cleaning. Um, so they, um, this is a memo, if you guys can see it, from um, our public works director. She's got four bids here, $34 being the winner winner, um, American Pipe and Catch Basin. So we'd like to award the bid for Catch Basin Cleaning to American Pipe and Catch Basin Cleaning LLC at $34 per basin and $46 per headwall for the period of July 1, 2023 to June 20. June 30, 2024, with the option to renew on a year-by-year -year basis for two additional years with the approval of the town and the vendor. Do I have that motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next up, this is a um, municipal agreement that we do with construction projects. Similarly, the way we do capital improvement projects, we have kind of a running list of all the projects. We do this at every 10 years as an agreement with um, uh, 
the state just to put, you know, again, it's just kind of to put a laundry list together. Yeah, well, this 10-year one, this was the first time we did it, but it was for 10 years. We have, we have one for construction, and then they created one for right-of-way stuff um, so that this way, when you do go to do this stuff, um, each individual project still has to be brought forth, but instead of a document like this, you get a document that looks like this and this many pages. You get a, a project authorization letter that spells out the particulars for that particular project, the costs, and that's what you end up signing. But I sent you both the 10 year, the 10 year agreement. Yeah, so if you guys want to look at that and see what it all is, we can make a motion at another meeting. We don't have to do this tonight. You want to take some time to read through it. Or we can make the motion tonight to authorize the signing. They're going to be soliciting new agreements to all the towns that, that are coming up, but they haven't written them yet. So <coughs> it could take a few months. It could take almost a year. So that's why they're asking us to just ex do an amendment to extend our contract for a year. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. You're okay with it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we need a motion that the Honorable Irene M. Haynes for Slipman is hereby authorized to sign amendment number one to the agreement entitled Master Municipal Agreement for Construction Projects. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. We'll take care of that. So next up is a gift acceptance from Consumer Reports. Thank you very much. Um, the um, Consumer Reports asked um, us for um, some ideas as far as what we could purchase. We talked about some um, equipment for playgrounds. We talked about some life-saving, and they picked life-saving. Thank you very much. Um, however, the only question here is that, and we're still working on it, is, is that the, um, the Lucas device does cost 18715 but also on the quote was a, um, like a maintenance agreement, and I... I didn't, when I talked to, to consumers, I didn't talk about the maintenance agreement. And so the, with that, the cost of the device and the maintenance agreement were close to almost 25000 So we wouldn't have extra money for the AEDs. However, we have found some money in other places where we could get possible AEDs for the libraries. However, we're also checking with the fire department one more time on that maintenance agreement to find out whether or not, you know, sometimes they just, you know, they sell maintenance agreements for the sake of selling maintenance agreements and not necessarily needed or they are already in a maintenance mm -hmm. issue with the other Lucas devices they have. So we're just checking to see whether or not we actually have to buy the whole thing, or can we do the 18 and then buy two new AEDs with their money, or do we have to find the AED money elsewhere? So anyway, we still can accept the 25,000 from consumer reports, and again, thank them, but I just kind of wanted to be clear on what's going on with the dollars there. So we may have some, we may be moving them around a little bit, but it's still going to, in the same life saving device yeah. of the Lucas, anyway. Possibly AEDs as well, depending on what we find out. Okay. So, we need a motion to accept the gift from Consumer Reports for the purchase of the Lucas device chest compression system and the remainder of the funds possibly to be spent toward the addition of um, AED machines and send the acceptance of said donation to the Board of Finance and Town Meeting for approval. So moved. Second. Abstention. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much to consumers. We will be in touch. So thank you more completely, but thank you. It's always wonderful to have consumer reports, and we thank you for all your donations over the years. And exciting things happening there. It was fun to read the newspaper article mm -hmm. about what's going on. Um, okay, next up is the Broadband in Implementation Committee appointments. Um, so we had the Broadband Study Group. It looks like we want to move forward and see what it's actually going to um, cost the town to actually start implementing a, a, a broadband um, system here. So we have a um, group of people that have um, stepped up to the plate and have um, offered to continue this good work. And so we're here to appoint Stanton Conover, Teresa Gover, Bruce Harris, Craig Mansfield, Stuart Palmer, Tom Savigny, and Laura White to the Broadband Implementation Committee to serve until their charge is complete. Do I have a motion? Abstain. Yeah. So moved. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that. Oh, sorry. Okay, next up is we have some uh, commissions and committee changes. Um, I'll call your attention to the email from Lisa Conroy recommending an appointment to the Recreation Commission. Um, we'd like to appoint, I need a motion to appoint Barry Thiel as a regular member to fill a vacancy on the Recreation Committee for a term commission with a term to expire July 1, 2026. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you to Barry. And then we also have for the Conservation Commission um, a note from Gary Wilson, <clears throat> the chairman. He has, um, would like to appoint Alan Bonansky as an alternate member to fill a vacancy on the Conservation Commission with a term to expire June 30th, 2025. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. There were no tax refunds. And we have another public comment. All right, liaison reports, anything? Um, just our sustainability meeting didn't have enough people for quorum last Tuesday, so we're looking for a new meeting date. Fair enough. Um, we should let them know Brian could please us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Brian could please leave the house. <laughs> no. But Carl's staying till September. <laughs> And Steve's leaving us. Does Carl know IT? <laughs> Bellandes. Oh, right. And we're losing a police officer. Steve Bellandes is going to Eversource. Okay, not in the police business. Good. So we wish all of those people. Yes. Good luck. Much success. We'll miss you terribly. Yeah. Like, terribly. Sure. But we'll get through it. We'll find some other talented individuals to uh, help us out. So if you know anybody who knows IT or police work, <laughs> let us know. Um, yeah, so that's not happy stuff. Um, we also want to make sure that everybody knows that there is a budget <coughs> public hearing next Tuesday, <coughs> June 13th at 7 p.m. at the high school auditorium. Please come out. Um, the Board of Finance is actually meeting Monday. If you want to come Monday to um, hear about their deliberations as far as what's happened, but basically what we're we've done is um, the reval, um, you know, and this is just a precursor, and I think the more we talk about it, the more people understand it, but the reval is basically something that we have to do every five years. There's not much we can do about that. The reval is a market condition. There's nothing we can do about that either. Um, so it comes out the way it comes out. Um, and interesting, when we started looking at the numbers a little bit more on the reval, we realized that, not that we didn't know before, but the, the value of commercial property went down. And commercial is a bigger nut, right? Because a building, a commercial building is worth a million bucks. And when that gets, gets revalued at less, that tax bill is exponentially bigger than a, you know, a personal home. So the personal homes are taking care of that deficit. So that's another thing, is, is that when you start looking at the numbers and you really kind of start thinking about them, um, with the reval coming down in commercial property, we're all going to be stepping up and paying more because of that, because that's what we're losing, you know. So that's something, you know, that's something else to think about as far as that goes. So, um, so the reval, well, there's not a whole lot we can do in regards to the budget, um, you know, to the to the mill rate. And and one of the things that we have to remind people is that our mill rate did go down by 6.04, which means actually next time, next year, when we do the budget again, you'll see more savings in your in your tax bill because it'll it's not it's not the upset that we have this year. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Can't imagine why. So um, anyway, as far as that goes, that's what's happening there. The other thing, and this was from their survey that they did, um, that reval was one of the big concerns. Another big concern, obviously, was the ambulance and what's going on there and whether or not we're funding ambulance and people are concerned that we don't have an ambulance. We do have an ambulance, but there wasn't funding in there. So what they've done is they found $100,000 of contingency money to put in for ambulance services. And I'll give you guys a, a brief, um, quick synopsis of where the money came from. So 46 of it came from the half the salary of the police officer of Jeff Rhodes because we're actually sharing Jeff Rhodes now with Hebron for the um, uh, accreditation. I was trying to think of the other big <laughs> word I had to say. So the accreditation work, we're actually splitting with Hebron. 
So we're getting, they're paying basically half the salary. So we're getting $46,000 back from that. So we can put that, we can take that out of the police budget and put it into contingency. Then there's $36,000 from, I think in my head. Um, shoot, what was the Capital. Other? Capital, thank you. Um, when Steve Hedler was here, he was, he had a list of, you know, vehicles that being purchased. Um, um, Michelle Velez, our new public works director, went through the whole capital list as far as what she thought, and they could forgo buying a pickup truck. So there's $36,000 coming back out of the public works budget <coughs> going into contingency. And then the final 18 of that, of that 100,000, and again, they'll discuss this more thoroughly. Um, the 18 looks like we might be getting, and this is a, a potential um, revenue increase from the pub, uh, from the transfer station for um, haulers um, because the haulers they're changing the system in which the haulers so the haulers might actually be paying more and we might get more revenue through that but that's not going to happen until the end of the of the year at some point so it's future revenue but between those three items there's a hundred thousand dollars that they can put into contingency and so that it's it's contingent on ambulance services so whichever way we go you know. It's there, and so we funded the ambulance. So we, we hope that between those two things, unfortunately, the reval, you know, maybe as more people understand it, we talk about it more, they'll at least understand it better, and they'll vote for the budget. And then again, the contingency money is now there for ambulance services, so we hope that that will belay that concern that everybody had about that. So um, that's what we're going with in regards to the budget, and again, um, there's a public hearing next Tuesday night at the high school, 7 o'clock, be there answer your to answer you know any questions that you might have the board of selectmen and the board of finance or the board of finance myself anyway but I don't know if you guys are coming or not um, but we'll be there and you know we'll try and answer whatever questions they have and that they're hoping to set the referendum for the July 11th date town meeting June town 27th meeting. sorry town meeting town 27th. meeting June 27th and, and that should referendum it. July 11th is the potential plan potential plan of dates all right, so that's what's happening on Tuesday. And again, Monday is the Board of Finance meeting, if anybody wants to go to that and ask any other questions regarding Board of Finance. Oh, and lastly, the Neighborhood Assistance Act public hearing is June 14th at 7 p.m. at the Municipal Office of Complex. I'm going to moderate it, yes, is moderating that. And I gave you just so you have to, to look them over. We've got two applications. By the deadline we asked for, um, one same two we always <laughs> get open space and good speed. Yeah. Good speed and, and open space. Um, so. Your next meeting after the public hearing, you'll vote to send these on to the state, and then I have to have them set by July first. And if this is the like funny thing where it's basically we're approving that. This like is our towns that companies can donate to these items. On. None of these projects are a conflict with anything going on in the town. That is, is what you're kind of is what we're confirming. approving. But it's not us like approving money for these projects right now. Right. It's just the way it works. All right. And yeah. Any questions about that? Thank you for doing that. On that night. Yep. It. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Um, I did want to. I had COVID, and that's why I missed the um, Memorial Day parade. Okay. Glad you're feeling better. It was a, a lovely day. Yeah, I saw and, photos uh, and things. It was there was a lot of people there, which was great. Um, and Linda did a amazing job as usual combining everybody so. and like melding them together as they go out <laughs> yeah so thank yeah. you for your work on that thank you Linda for all your work on that second